back to the channel. We have a special treat for you today. Today we are out at Paso Tiempo in Santa Cruz, California, and this is one amazing golf course. Our good buddy Paul Becker recommended this place. He said it was like his top two golf courses that he's ever played played on, and um, so yeah, we had to we had to make a stop here. Yeah, a lot of people recommended it actually, and they said it was uh, such an awesome course, tough, challenging, and uh, just overall a fun course. The guy in the pro shop told us that uh, they usually recommend uh, that you warm up for about 20 minutes on these greens because they're very Masters-esque, being designed by Alistair McKenzie, who also uh, helped design Augusta National. So uh, there's going to be a lot of similarities with this golf course in Augusta. You guys are going to see its only its main defense out here are the greens. So they're small. We already drove by a few, and they look they look tiny, <laughs> even smaller than the ones at uh, Spyglass. So it should be a lot of fun. Yeah. So a little bit about our course. We were built in 1929, not necessarily the greatest year to open a new golf facility. Uh, our founder was Marion Hollins. Marion Hollins originally worked on the Pebble Beach project, specifically Cypress Point. That's how she and Alistair McKenzie originally got together to work on the Pasa Tiempo project. Um, Bobby Jones ended up playing our course opening day. This is actually a bronzed uh, copy of the scorecard there. You can see he, of course, was the lowest score in the group there. He and Alistair McKenzie had been in some contact after Bobby Jones was involved with Cyprus as well. Um, after talking with Alistair and coming to play the opening day, Bobby Jones fell in love with the design and was committed to having Alistair be his course designer for Augusta National and basically made him an offer he couldn't refuse to get him to go play. So the last three courses that McKenzie designed were Cyprus, Paso Tiempo, and Augusta. Paso Tiempo, however, was the final course that he saw to completion before he passed away. Mackenzie's American home is still on property today. It's on hole number six. We have a plaque with his likeness on it with a quote from him, which is uh, one of the uh, one of his staples as far as how he believed in building golf courses. We also have some of Mackenzie's 13 general principles on golf course architecture. His his biggest traits are with his bunkers and camouflage. So during the war, he was actually a camouflage expert. So anytime that you go and see McKenzie bunkers, a pretty, uh, pretty common standard staple of his design is when you're walking towards the green, you'll be able to see the bunker, but once you get past the bunker and turn away, all the bunkers disappear. One of his best examples, I believe it's number five at Cypress Point, there's about eight bunkers on that hole. Once you get on the to the green and look back towards the tee box, you can't see a single one of them. So he's big on camouflage, visual deception, making things look closer or further away. And then of course, uh, the greens. Green complexes are extremely difficult here. We always recommend players uh, get some at least 20 to 30 minute warm up just on the greens to get a feel for them. On our facility as well, because we have some elevation change and built into the landscape, uh, you can get some putts that really truly are Augusta-esque out here. Um, another signature of McKenzie is really trying to make the course kind of a signature of the landscape. So this entire golf course here was made just with horse and plow, no real modern machinery used, and he really enjoyed making the course, you know, using as much of the natural landscape as possible. All right, guys, we're about to tee off right now. Number one here is 457 yards. And you can see it's pretty much straight away going downhill. And the green looks like it's surrounded by a few bunkers. So nothing too crazy. Let's see how we do. All right, good drive. A little bit right. All right, so Mike missed his drive a little bit to the right here, but he's got kind of an opening. He can't really go at the flag, but he can, I think he'll be able to get it on the green. His ball is right there, and this is kind of what he's looking at. You can see the flag up there. It's a blue flag up there on the right-hand side. I got 185 yards. I'm gonna attempt to play a fade with a seven iron right now. <laughs> you faded it though. Yeah. It was turning. Caught a tiny bit thin. All right, got 185 yards. I'm gonna hit a six iron, which I hit about 175. Pins in the very back, so I'm gonna try to just go from the middle of the green and maybe get some roll off. All right, guys, that's where I ended up in the bunker. And here's what I'm working with. So as you can see, we got pretty good ways to go here. Pretty 
good from there. All right, guys, this is what I'm looking at. Pretty much the same shot, just out of the grass. I gotta land it kind of soft, right over the ridge, with a little bit of spin. All right guys, this hole is 437 yards and it looks like it's a dogleg right. You can see the green way down there. And just so you guys know, this course is only 6,500 yards, so it's a pretty short course, but the defense, like I said earlier, is the greens and uh, some of the rough and the big trees out here that you have to contend with. Okay, good ball, coach. Okay, good one. So I have 176, but with slope, it's playing about 165. And uh, it depends, there's a lot of bunkers up there. I'm gonna hit a seven iron, which I hit about 160, but I'm gonna just aim well right of the bunkers. And if I fade the ball, it'll be good. If I hit it short, hopefully I'm still in grass. And uh, if I get a jumper live, it'll be right next to the pin. So I'm just trying to minimize uh, the damage here. Not a great angle to go into it. I got 153. I'm gonna hit another smooth eight iron. Maybe a little knockdown too. Great shot. This shot looks like a master shot right here, guys. Everything slopes right to left. This is where the pin cut is. He's gonna have to land this so softly. <laughs> oh man, I thought I was leaving myself in a good position to get up and down, but this is tough. Everything is banking to the left and then there's a big bowl. So if it goes a little bit past the pin, it's gonna roll out another 20 feet. I'm gonna have like a 40 footer coming back. So I'm gonna try to throw this in the fringe on the right and put a little check on it, which I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get out of the rough, but it's gonna be a delicate shot. <laughs> or maybe I just fly it there with a floppy. I think that's the play. Yeah, I, might I think you have to carry it all the way. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. What a bar. <laughs> All right guys, this is a 235 yard par three. Look at how much trouble's up there. Nothing but bunkers. Um, if you make par on here, it's gonna feel like a birdie. Oh, you got over it. Oh, wow. This is where I ended up. I <laughs> just barely missed. Marco left his a little short in the bunker. But I think he's got a pretty good lie. Yep, rolled back, pretty nice. Oh, that was pretty good. All right, I think rolled out quite a bit. He's got about 10 feet. All right, great Sandy. What an awesome hole this is. 378 yards, par four. Really big fairway compared to what we were looking at before. Just a massive, massive fairway. So I'm guessing uh, the greens are gonna be pretty slopey on this one. I got about 113 yards left, uh, but there's wind into us. It's already kind of starting to pick up. And if you go long on this on this hole, there's a slope that just goes right back down. So my whole plan here is just to go a little bit long and bring it back off that slope. I don't want to short side myself in the bunker. Oh, really good shot. I got 95, but I got this big, huge tree right in my way. So I think I'm just gonna hit a little knockdown eight iron and run it up, you know, right below actually. Oh, stayed short. All right, Mike just ended up a little bit short here, but he's good at these shots. He should be able to get pretty close. Oh, almost dunked it. <laughs> that would have been sweet. Yeah. Oh. Good 
and roll. So another difficult par three out here, 190 yards and uh, nothing but trouble. I mean, this green, look where that pin's at. And then look at, just look at the slope from left all the way down to the lower portion of the screen. I mean, things coming down like five to 10 feet of slope. It's crazy. You basically just have, want to go right at this pin. That's what I'm going to do. I just take it on. Is that any good? Look at this. Look at this. This looks tasty. Bounce. Oh! Wow. Hey. What a shot. So Justin and I managed to hit the green on this one. And uh, I'm happy with that. I just gotta show you guys. Look at where this pin is. I mean, it's like 20 feet wide. And then look at this slope. I mean, right up there, you got a crazy slope. And this all just goes straight downhill. Awesome. And Mike's in the bunker over here. I mean, he's got no chance of getting this. This is so tough. Okay. Perfect. We landed that. It's coming back. What a golf shot, man. Oh, he did it. Oh! Oh, that was such a good par on that hole. Mike almost made his, but man, that was a great bunker shot. So this is a 567 yard par five. And look at how narrow that is. I mean, I'm not even sure which way this goes. Looks like it goes straight, but for some reason I don't believe that. All right, I got about 250 yards of the green, but I'm not gonna go for it. There's just a ton of trouble up there. I'm gonna just David Toms this one, lay it with the six iron, actually a five iron, and uh, leave myself a little 80 yards, 90 yards in. A little bit left, guys. I got 250. I gotta go with the three wood right now, so I'm doing good. Where to go, bunker? Oh, bunker, caught that lip and just went in. If, if, if it was like two yards to the right, it would have been perfect. So that's Mr. Alistair McKenzie's house right there, guys. He designed, uh, or helped design Augusta. Obviously designed this golf course. And uh, as a nice uh, memento for him, I just hit my ball right into this yard. <laughs> I put a terrible swing on that five iron and uh, just uh, bounced off the car path and went right in there. So I'm gonna take a drop right here. Oh, good shot. All right, so Mike's right in the bunker right there and uh, should be able to get this pretty close. Bunkers are really nice out here. All right guys, hopefully you're enjoying part one of Pasa Tiempo. Uh, we're having a lot of fun out here. This is a very unique golf course and a lot of history out here. So looking forward to seeing what the rest of the course is all about. Check back in tomorrow. We'll have that video for you guys and uh, we'll see you then.